What's up, YouTube? Um, just out getting the dog some fresh air on a walk. And figured I would say good morning. It is a cold morning. Who else is getting ice? Or should I say who isn't getting ice these days? Winter is truly here. And it's very difficult sometimes for me to focus on the springtime. Is anyone else like that? Like, whenever I... I'm focusing on spring and doing the garden. I don't know, it just, uh, it gets to be hard. So today we're doing some more, <laughs> some more seeds. I'm planting a whole bunch of, well, getting all my tomatoes ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's when I start them. So we'll see, we'll see how that looks. Let's go inside and I've got some seeds to unbox today. What? I had absolutely no business buying seeds and i did it so let's let's take a look so we're in the greenhouse today actually um because my children are crazy and they're inside uh like all the children right now in ice storms and so it's just too loud not like the ice is very quiet it's kind of nice to be in in here so I bought a thermometer. I know this is like old school style, right? Like I could have gotten a digital one and everything, but I felt like this was so much better uh, for me just to, to use out here. I'm gonna have to find a place for it. Cause like, I wanna know how warm it is in here. I wanna know um, like how cool it gets to, at nighttime. Cause I wanna be able to move my seedlings out here um, the ones that'll be ready in like March and depending obviously with the snow and the ice and everything, I want to use my greenhouse. So um, I'm going to have to, I think I'll get a, like a command hook or something and stick it in here. I use those for like everything in my, in my house. So why not use it for everything in the greenhouse? So uh, I was, I just got this off Amazon because that's our life, right? Um, yeah. Thermometer. Springfield. I don't know. But let's get to the juicy stuff. Um, I had absolutely no business whatsoever buying seeds. But you know what I did? I bought seeds. But hear me out. And I'm going to unbox them for you. Hear me out. So I bought seeds because I am going to be doing, I tried succession planting for the first time last year. And I did some I did some good work. Um, I had some success. And what I mean that by that is I planned it a little late, but that's okay because I'm, I'm learning, right? Everybody's learning. And so like the radishes that I planted were amazing and came up right on target at the right time. But the other things that I planted, like the Brussels sprouts, I planted a little too late. I didn't plant those till September. And I think it was just because I didn't want to pull stuff out. They were still producing. And I, I don't know if anyone has a problem with that at the end of the season with like, oh, but it still has fruit on the plant. I could just wait a couple days. It's just um, then it pushes everything else back, which has happened. And that's OK, because I'm learning, too. So I we grew the Shawu radish last year. And if you don't know what the Shawu radish is, oh, my gosh. So it's, it's got a variety of different names um, by different companies, I feel like. I could be wrong. They could just be different varieties. But it's got the green top and the white radish. And they're, they're not like giant. They're like tiny parsnip size. Um, I don't have any, I don't think that I ordered because I couldn't find any this year. Like I, I didn't plant out all of my seeds last year, which is great. So I'm definitely planting those. I got into Korean cuisine um, and I just make a lot of things from scratch, obviously. So I really wanted to grow those radishes and these, um, the Pusa Jumani radish, which is a purple radish. And when I tell you both of those did excellently, I'm plant I want to plant more of those this year so that I can pickle some um, and have have some for kimchi as well. So, because that's a goal. But uh, so I know that's not in here. But I was trying to find something that I could also grow if I didn't have enough seeds to really satisfy my love for this radish. And when I tell you how good it is, it's not going to even come through on this video. And sorry, I'm a hot mess, but I'm a mom. So. Let's 
take the first order out. And um, this is the one that I was waiting for from M.I. Gardner. M.I. Gardner is based uh, in Michigan. And I actually found out, I didn't even take note last time I ordered from them. Uh, he's wonderful, he's on YouTube. But they're in Port Huron. It's not even here. And I used to go to camp in Port Huron and I was like, oh man, small world, number one. And number two, I am very happy to support somebody who is a smaller business, number one, a home done business. And um, also I have some identity to where they are. That's kind of cool, right? So I have not looked through all these to remind myself what I bought. So uh, don't laugh at me. And I bought way too many, but that's fine. I also got for Christmas, a uh, hydroponic set from my mother, um, which I have never even done any research into hydroponics. And now I've read a couple books and I think I'm going to try, I think June is when I'm going to try to start those things. And I say that because I have a finite window with the outside growing and we have a lot of investment in our outside. And so I'm going to start those first and really make sure that those seedlings are healthy, happy, and ready to go when the time is right. So I don't think I'm gonna really focus on the hydroponics, the growing in the hydroponics yet. Um, plus it's really, it feels like a big learning curve. I feel like I needed to just have a friend call me and be like, it's not that hard, you can do it. <laughs> um, I've decided to grow mediums and all that, but I don't know. I'm also not a good definitive decision maker. I can make a lot of executive decisions very quickly. But when it comes to like some things, I get just a little paralyzed. Anyway, on to the seeds, the good stuff. So I bought China Rose Radish and I bought this radish because this is one of those radishes that I wanted to try for a while. And because I liked the Shabu so much, I was like, you know what? I can plant this with them and um, and see how I like these. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant a lot of these cause I'm really interested in like doing a variety of things with radishes this year, which I didn't do last year. And because they, this particular radish only needs like partial sun, I'm gonna do it in my Slim Shady bed next to the house because that gets about six to eight hours of sun every day. And I think this, the radishes normally do well there. I also got the Hailstone Radish. That looks really good. It says it's real, the flesh is really delicious and holds its freshness for a long time. So I'm excited <laughs> about this one. Oh, and then, I had never even heard of these kohlrabi. I've never even heard of kohlrabi for like, I don't know. I heard about it, I wanna say not last year, but the year before, but I've never seen it. And Jess over on Roots and Refuge has these beautiful inspirational kohlrabi. And I was like, I wanna grow that and I wanna taste it. Um, so I got a white and a purple. And um, let me show you the purple a little bit better. I mean, does it not look like it's an alien plant? It's so cool. And all of these, the radish and the kohlrabi, the, the greens are edible also. Uh, so I could toss them in salads and things like that. Whoa, walls your pants. Let's get you back up there. Um, so I'm really interested in that. And then when our chickens get here, um, that's another story. But when our chickens get here, I'll also be able to give them some of the greens if for any reason the kids don't like them or um, they just are too spicy for the kids and my husband and I can't keep up. I found some more rainbow carrots. We eat the rainbow, as you know, in the house. So I was able to find some of these, which is good. I haven't been able to find carrots very easily this year that are the normal varieties that I like to grow because I like a rainbow carrot. And so like the, um, I have the, pur the cosmic purples, I've got the reds, I've got the goldens, but I don't have any whites anymore. And um, so it's, it'll be, it'll be nice to have a little bit more color in the basket and on the plates. And then these two, I'm gonna be planting the bok choy in um, hydroponically. I might try it as a second planting in the fall as well. Um, because this is cold tolerant, and so I'll do them outside and hydroponically and see how that works. And then we've been eating a lot of cabbage lately, and I've never grown cabbage, so I got some cabbage. So those are everything, that is everything from M.I. Gardner. Um, and there's just so many, 
so many seeds in that. And then I got, um, these are from Burpee. I got a watermelon rabbit radish, which is um, pink on the inside and white on the outside. And it looks like a watermelon. I thought these would be really fun for the kids. And I could vinegar these and just put them like as a side um, for any of our meals. And then I have not been really successful with peas um, in my growing career. And so any suggestions, comments down below would be really helpful. They grow about two feet, three feet, and then they just stop growing. And I think my problem has been supports in the past. I've only had short trellises and I haven't had vining peas. And so I really wanted to get the most out of our space. And because we do a lot of vertical gardening, I need to trellis up some vining peas this year. And I want to try that out. So these are the purple potted pea also by Burpee. And these are, um, my kids love purple things. The anthocyanins make them really excited and they'll eat them purple in the garden. And then when they cook up, they turn green and the kids are like, Oh my gosh, they're magic. So obviously they want to, um, they want to eat magic peas. Uh, and the purple potted pole beans are the same way. And I'm excited because we're growing those too. So this says that these are really strong climbing vines. And so I'm going to do my best to make sure that they're well watered in limey soil and are trellised. Uh, we're doing some arches this year, I think, um, to do some of our trellising. And I'll do a video on that, I think, a little later. But um, when we can get back outside. But... Um, I think that the peas will do really well on an archway and plus it'll hang down. It'll be beautiful. I know you don't pull them. You're supposed to cut them, but I still think that that would be lovely. So this next order is, oh, I have another order from Burpee. We'll just keep the orders together. Uh, oh, these are the marigolds. So uh, one of my goals this year was not only to do better with my succession planting, but it's also to companion plant better. I always do like basil with my tomatoes and my nasturtiums um, as a host plant with my peppers and my tomatoes. But there are other things that I just like, and I do marigolds, but I am really trying to be more conscious. So I'm planting a lot more basil too this year. Like I'm gonna have to give it away. Um, or preserve it or make pesto. I'm not a pesto girl, but why not make pesto and give it to people who like it? Um, but I couldn't find any marigold seeds other than the ones I currently have, which is just like a kaleidoscope of color in one head. And it's like burnt orange and yellow, but it's in one head and it's beautiful. But I was like, you know, with as many marigolds as I'm going to be planting on the exterior of my boxes this year, I really wanted to have some beauty in it. And so I was able to find burpee had some marigolds um the primrose lady hybrid so i got that this is a creamy colored um a creamy colored marigold with like yellow uh yellow um flower heads and then the snow the snowball hybrid marigold which is um just white flowers and then this is called the triple treat marigold and the blooms transition from red to orange to yellow to create like a wave of color. And so I thought that those were going to be really interesting out here because I, I put marigolds on every corner normally, but I'm going, so I need like, I don't know, 16 or so plants right away. Well, not right away, but 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 plants or so. And I just wanted some variety. So you're the variety. And then I got, oh yeah, I got the Kentucky, um, the Kentucky blue pole bean uh, to grow on one of our arches. And I've never grown a Blue Lake style green bean as a pole bean. I do purple potted poles and I do the slippery silks, but this is the first time where we'll have like a green Blue Lake style or the, like the Kentucky wonder style pole bean and so I'm excited to do those on a trellis too and the last little bit is from Fairy Morris and this is this one's also very excited so I got icicle short top radish um I know how many radishes can you eat 
we eat a lot of radishes plus this is all succession sewing too like we continue to eat radishes but i'm also like a preserver and so i want to make sure that we have some um some for later oh i also got kentucky wonder <laughs> from from fairy morris this is the the pole bean variety um so that'll be good i got the garden giant radish which is i mean i'm actually very low on french breakfast so i needed to like get some more regular red radishes and then i got some celery um because i didn't realize how much celery we actually ate until recently and this takes like 125 days so i may actually be too late right now it's never too late in february but i need to get these started so i might start these with my tomatoes tomorrow um so god i opened it today this is a uh, toy choy which i'm going to do hydroponically uh i might also do some celery hydroponically too that would be interesting i'm going to do the detroit dark red beet which is an, i believe it's an early variety my mom grew up on these beets she harvests in 60 days and she swears by that one so we're gonna get that and make some like chips and stuff i'm really hoping for a dehydrator this year for my birthday which is in like a couple weeks but that's not gonna happen so <laughs> i i'm excited to like just put these in the oven and make chips out of them um pickle them preserve them i i like a variety of foods um i got i guess a second thing of kohlrabi i didn't realize that but that's all right and then oh i got the melting sugar peas so these are exciting too because these will ha these were um these are going to be good on a trellis and from what i understand companion planting wise and i didn't bring my notes out because it's raining and snow or icing and i was just like i didn't want to bring everything but the so you plant the peas with is it beets you plant the peas with beets and the beans with radishes and apparently they help um they help to support each other with one taking something out of the uh, taking something out of the soil and then the other like peas put a lot of nitrogen into the soil and that apparently helps the the beets grow and the beans are the same not with nitrogen but with something else for the radishes so i'm going to be doing those types of even though i'm planting the pole beans and the peas on the trellis i'm going to be incorporating the companion planting with the pea, uh, peas and the beets and the beans and the radishes and see what they do because um, I've never done that before and I will have some space at the bottom of the trellis and so I may as well try it out so yeah and that's it boy this is a lot of seeds number one I have no idea how I got all of these seeds into the house without my husband knowing that I had ordered seeds, number one. But like, look at how many seeds these are. And this is like the best. I mean, this is a lot of seeds and I don't know what I was thinking. But it'll be super fun because I'm planting out all my tomatoes and a variety of other things tomorrow and i need to get some of these started also so i'm glad they came in on time and i'm glad i could share them with you before i stick them in the dirt so i will see you next time thanks for joining me take care